Well, the topic you know is how to build a brand and expand it with social media and connecting it with millions. And tonight, my hope is to give you some tools you can take back home, take back to your desk so that you can start doing this. And perhaps you won't reach millions overnight, and I hope you do. But if not, I want to leave you with enough um, tactics and a strategy so that you can reach hundreds at a time every time you speak up um, online. So. As you can suspect, the topic is about online word of mouth. And word of mouth has existed since Stone Ages, and people have always communicated. There has always been a story that um, carried itself from one family to another, from one person to another. What's different today is that um, technology is enabling everyday citizens to publish online. And people are able to find this information through computers, through their phones. Um, and accessing it every which way 24-7. So a story you publish online can really um, have tremendous power and reach thousands of people at a given time, and that's what um, we're going to talk about today. A lot of times, I think people get focused on these tactics. The, um, they say, okay, blogs are great, and, and they are the um, most common trend today. I should have a blog out there. I should be tweeting. I heard about this tool. But it's really not about the tool, but the art of building a relationship. You know how to build friendships. Uh, you have family members you're in touch with. So you are actually experts in social media already. It's really the essence of building a relationship. The same way you wouldn't jump in the middle of a party and expect that everybody pays attention to you. You shouldn't be expecting to just launch a blog or start a Twitter um, feed and, exp and hope that people find you. It's really about first observing. That's why I have the eye out there. And then listening to conversations and, and a topic that interests you. And then finding meaningful ways to add value to that conversation. Some of you are in real estate, some of you are, um, are moms, and some of you have your own businesses. So finding the thing that interests you and connecting with people who are talking about similar topics to yours, that's the entryway to social media, not just speaking on your own and publishing on your own. So first listen, and then join the conversation. Now, who's the driving force behind social media? And, and who are the kinds of people who publish online and who, who become these nouveau public opinion leaders, if you will? I recently published a book called um, Implementing Word of Mouth Marketing. And I brought a couple copies here for you if you would like to take a look later. And there, I talk about this group that's called Networking Agents. And from a marketing perspective, this is not a group that you can defined by demographics. It's not someone who's 18 to 24, young male, and lives in Houston. It's a psychographic. It's an approach. It's a mentality. They're influential online and offline. They are the lean forward type of audience. They love collecting information. That's their currency. That's what they breed on. Um, that's how they define themselves as public opinion leaders. And they're advocates. I mean, they take it upon themselves to take up an issue and, and put things together and rally for a cause. And that's why a lot of brands and marketers are after these people, because they want them to take on their products or their causes. They're essentially newsmakers. They're the ones who build an issue or take up on an issue and pass it along and make it viral. The question is, how do you become a networking agent, right? A lot of you are interested in that aspect of it. Well, I just put together some uh, basic guidelines, seven steps that I think are fundamental in this process. One is defining your story. The same way a journalist would approach an article, the same way you might start writing a composition, uh, before you open up a blog or your channel, uh, just think of what you have to share, what area you're an expert on. And the example that I'm bringing to you today is um, from a woman named Amy Tenderich. Do you read her, this blog by any chance? It's called Diabetes Mine. So Amy is a, is a journalist, and she gets diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And as a patient, she starts doing a lot of research, has a lot of experience dealing with doctors, different treatment techniques, and, and a lot, she collects a lot of patient stories as well, and starts pooling all this information on her blog called Diabetes Mine. And she becomes, over time, the authority on this topic. Today, she's one of the most prominent bloggers who write about this topic. And this is a snapshot of her About Me page on, um, on her blog, diabetesmind.com. You can see that she's been featured in traditional media like Newsweek, Chicago Tribune, Forbes. She has become members of, founding members of um, organizations that focus in this area. So small interest 
And something that happened to her out of circumstance blossomed into this stream of knowledge, stream of information about a very important topic that's connecting her with hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis. She's the authority, um, in addition to a physician, in addition to a nurse, on diabetes today online. This is one of my favorite stories. Heather, who you see in there, I met her at a conference. Um, she is from England. She lives in northern England. You know her? I know her. You met her? I met her, uh, yeah, because of, of online. Online, okay. Oh, I had the pleasure of um, seeing her speak at a blog, her, a women's blogging conference. And her story really struck me because she comes from this tiny, tiny village in northern England. 63 people, she said. Um, so imagine having your own small business, and she has a farm. She's a farmer. That's her family that you're seeing there. And um, what they produce um, farm goods, and then they, they wanted to sell, of all things, warm compost. I mean, who's going to buy warm compost in a 63 people audience? And she had, on top of it, her business was failing. So her accountant tells her, you really have to shut this down because you're losing money. And she's like, well, what about, wait a minute, I, ha I have ideas for a website, I want to have a blog. And then the accountant says, I don't advise that. And she fires the accountant, launches the website, launches the blog. Um, and then things take off from there on. But I think what's interesting for, uh, for her, for, or from her story, is that not the, just that she didn't listen to her accountant, but also the fact that uh, she found her way in social media. So they built this website, and it was a catalog business where you could pick items for, um, to create your own little British garden. So that's really a natural transition from catalog to online for audiences. But Heather wanted to speak, share, her lifestyle, her, her choices in, in the product creation process, just what was going on in the farm with her audience. So she starts blogging. And at the conference, she was saying that after a while, she realized it wasn't for her. She, wasn't, um, she was very chatty, but she wasn't a, a writer per se. So she, she uses her Mac to create these podcast series and does them on a regular basis. So all these customers, whether they're buying from her at that point or not, are getting a glimpse of her life in this remote, beautiful, idyllic um, British uh, farm. And she's very successful. She's, she has an award-winning business now that is growing. If you go to Wiggly Wigglers, named after her worms, <laughs> and you'll see that. And this is a snapshot of her podcast. She talks about her life there. And she's very authentic and genuine in her voice. The point I want to leave you with is, Pick the tool that works best for you. Just because everyone else is blogging, you don't have to blog. Find your strength, find your voice. If it's about making connections, maybe LinkedIn is the right thing. If, it's, if you like talking, maybe start your own podcast. If you like writing, go for blogs. And if you're just into short updates, Twitter could be better. Another good story to share. To be heard in social media is really difficult today. It's a really, really cluttered space. How are you going to break through? <laughs> And sometimes you can plan for it, and sometimes you can't, and it just happens. So, But this is a very genuine um, story. Have you heard of the Frozen Pea Fund? Any one of you? OK. Um, so a few years ago, this woman by the name Susan Reynolds is um, diagnosed with um, breast cancer. And she has to have a biopsy. And she comes back from um, her uh, biopsy. and. I never had to go through the experience, um, fortunately, but she's, she's swollen, and the doctor gives her ice packs. And she's trying to press them on her uh, chest, and it's very uncomfortable. So instead, she goes to her fridge, picks up these um, frozen pea packets, and puts them on. And lo and behold, she decides to take a photo of herself because just I guess she's looking for connection, and, and she posts it on Twitter. She has a lot of friends that she's met online and offline on Twitter. A couple other friends see this, and they sympathize with her. And they start rallying around the issue and turning it into a cause and start raising funds for breast cancer treatment. And they start this frozen pea fund. And within a matter of weeks, they raise $8,000 online. This movement is still continuing online because then other people who are sympathizing are stepping in front of the camera. They have their photos taken with either uh, the pea bag or, as you can see, much more creative iterations of, of the whole pea theme. And they start this trail by using people on Twitter. They're always in touch. Um, every year they do a fundraiser. The cause continues. It's out of one person's initiative and several others gathering around them. And very much like the situation today, if you think about it, one person's initiative and other people, um, helpful people gathering around. So 
her story, Susan's story, broke through because she found a small audience who, net, of networking agents who were really willing to reverberate it and take it to wider and wider circles because they had a, um, a mission. And that's very, um, if you invite people to a cause, if you give them a call to action, that's really inspiring for them. Another thing to think about when stepping into social media is to be practical. Everybody's going to Google looking up uh, answers to their questions and this is from a very popular mommy blog, Parent Hacks, and all they do is giving tips um, from the real experts, an actual parent. So these are snippets I picked up from um, their recent posts. So for Valentine's Day, they were talking about how to do magnet hearts. Um, to keep the fridge clean, they were talking about how you can take the lid of something else and put it under the baby's sippy cup. And for the Super Bowl, family entertainment. You could just print it off the, um, this is a bingo sheet. Uh, you can just print it off the web from their blog. So she's, the woman who's behind this is very practical. She's in tune with her audience. She knows exactly what they need. Okay, this woman is busy. She needs to entertain some people around Super Bowl. So let me give her something to entertain her audience. With tips, being in tune with the lifestyle of her audience, she really has aggregated a tremendous following around her blog. Something for the writers, no matter where you are, you can write in one place, but you can syndicate it, publish it in multiple places. Say you have a blog, why not add Twitter and have the same information go into Twitter, just a link to your blog. If you have video, the same thing can pop up on Facebook. Um, it can be part of your blog entry. Um, nowadays, Twitter is also uploading video. So don't just think one channel. Even if you have small following in different channels, Together, they can add up to thousands of people. So when you publish in one place, there's no shame in syndicating and repeating the same information on different platforms. That information is circulating so fast, you might as well repeat it a little bit so that you at least tap into um, 100 people at a given time. And being social, I mean, that, that is the inherent part of this process. A lot of times I see, I, I see a lot of companies do this, I see a lot, some people do this. I think it's much more difficult for companies to do this because it's sort of, um, they're used to being more robotic. But um, the essence of this medium is conversation. You would never be friends with someone who only talked about themselves and talked at you rather than had a conversation with you or never listened to you and never returned your calls, never returned your requests, right? So the same principle applies, and this is an example from um, a Twitter um, channel called Executive Moms. And the woman behind it is someone I just know online. She um, works for Estee Lauder. She's the head of their digital department. And um, when she came back from after having babies to work, she was a little bit, um, apparently her bio says, um, disappointed about the way the workplace was treating women with children and, and their special needs. So she started an online group called Executive Moms. And she has a website around it, she has a blog, and she has Twitter. And I just love the way she speaks with her um, audience on Twitter. If you look through the chain, you can see she's responding to every single thing that they're saying. She's asking them how they're doing. She's giving them quick answers as to how her weekend was and saying thank you. And that's, as, there's no, special formula to social media besides this kind of honest conversation, following up with people, responding, and being on top of it. So she's not leaving it alone saying, well, I set up the website and now I'm done. She's really harping on those relationships and she enjoys it. It's very genuine. Um, so socializing within social media is key. You have to be committed to that conversation. Speaking of which, this is a perfect example of how um, staying in touch pays off. This is a snapshot of actually my LinkedIn page. I was just um, amazed how many people um, the very, I'm connected to just from the one-on-one -on -one conversations I've had over the years with my business contacts or some of the personal contacts are in there as well, but this is generally for business. So with their connections from just 600 something people, I'm connected with 24,000 people. And if you build it over time, you will get there. It's just because everyone is coming online, everybody's building a digital footprint, and it will be easier and easier to find people with similar interests. The trick is to stay in touch and be on top of it and stick to the tool that works for you. Now, just before we wrap up, I um, wanted to share some tips. If you were to go back to your desk, OK, where do you start? How do you start writing for social media? The first thing to do is, I think, to consider your audience. Um, who are you writing for? Are you writing for a business audience? 
Are you writing for potential buyers? Are you writing for moms like yourself? Are you writing for parents or um, Turkish expat women who might appreciate your cross-cultural experience? Just think what's going to be their point of view and pick your tone and voice based on that. And in social media, it's very informal. It's not academic. I think people want to just digest the information and go. They're, they're bombarded with information already. So the more accessible your approach is, the more accessible your writing voice is, the better. Responding to comments, just like the way um, Marisa Thalberg was doing on her Twitter uh, feed, rewarding those people who are following you, who are talking to you, even if it's just a mere acknowledgement of like, thank you for your interest, thanks for following up, or giving them a thumbs up. All of these acknowledgements mean a lot, especially if you're representing a company, whether small or large. They feel heard, they feel acknowledged, they feel valued, your audience, and, and they come back. They start having that conversation with you. So don't disappear on your readers. I would say if you have a blog, post at least once a week. And if you can't do that, maybe not blog. But at least once a week, if not several times a week, that would be great. If you're on Twitter, don't be afraid to repost the same thing a couple times a day and then show that you have long-term um, presence. I think the, we, we keep hearing about these fantastic stories of sto uh, things that have gone viral overnight. Sure, those are out there. They're far and few in between. The essence of social media is building these relationships over time, staying in it, sticking to it, and building your community over time. Today you might have 10 people reading uh, what you publish online. By the end of the year, if you had 1,000 people, through their contacts, you're probably speaking to an audience of 5,000 people, if not more. And that would be success in social media. Some, again, practical tips. Um, make sure you understand the technology that you're using. I'm seeing a lot of um, clients of ours that I'm helping out who write beautiful entries, beautiful entries. They're doctors, they're um, experts in their fields, and they're artists, but then they don't tag it. They don't use these keywords that can go along with it that would help people find them on search engines. They don't link to other people who are writing about the same thing. It's OK. It's like academic research. The more you link, the more networked you are, the more your writing goes out. So don't forget about those um, simple tips. Again, when writing, I think um, honesty is crucial, but you don't have to share everything. You can put limits around what you share. So especially when writing on behalf of a brand, think through, OK, what would my mama say? That's my, <laughs> that's my criteria. If it's anything that um, would be embarrassing to share, would be too much detail, would, might put your business at risk, just don't share it. Anything that you wouldn't say to a stranger in person, don't put it online. Build trust and be, have an authentic voice. Those things are vital. If you're writing in a very didactic voice, I think people get bored pretty easily and walk away. But if you're honest, honest to the point where you're funny, honest to the point where other people can share your pain or can understand your concerns, that attracts audience. If you're writing on behalf of a company, absolutely disclose your relationship with the company. Say you are a real estate agent and you are giving advice about the marketplace. You build credibility that way. People want to know who you are, where you come from. It's, it's easier to be honest that way. It's better to be transparent, and you've, you gather a bigger following that way. And um, I'm also a member of this wonderful organization called Word of Mouth Marketing Association. They have a really resourceful website, woma.org. When in doubt, you can just refer to that. Um, they have great speakers online, offline, and conferences. I would definitely encourage you to get in touch with them. And with that, I thank you.